Hey guys, Steve Buller. Today I got a look at the Tier 6 Russian Destroyer Minsk. Troops on the screen here. Got Vian, got Sims. No concealment. Not even the concealment perk on the right hand side of the screen. Let me walk you through this for those of you that are running double concealment or even single concealment. And we'll see uh, Genevi. Uh, we'll see how it works out for him later. But what you're doing is putting, if you got a Max Bay and a Max Swirsky, you're putting six weeks worth of promotion orders into uh, improving the concealment. You're putting 16 insignias, which what is that? Four to six months worth of insignias probably into improving the concealment. Yes, I know you don't have to max these, but I'm just positing this way for you to think about it. So to begin with, you have the worst at the tier concealment for your destroyer. You put in all these resources, and what do you wind up with? Worst at the tier concealment for your destroyer. Uh, bells should be going off at this point. We're not playing this as a concealment build, but it's up to you. That's just my advice. Anyways, I picked this game here to kind of demonstrate how we want to be playing these, especially early on in the game. Uh, the positioning in terms of forwardness needs to be concealment destroyers, then these support destroyers, the Soviet destroyers, then the battleships and the cruisers behind that. Where people get into trouble with these, uh, from what I'm hearing from you guys and what I'm seeing out there, is they're pushing them too far forward. So you see, immediately we go far enough forward to spot the battleships, the cruisers, get some spotting damage, hopefully. But I'm trying to stay near my team. We need support uh, ships behind us in these cruisers. Trying to solo... If I push forward very quickly uh, and meet the destroyer, and let's say I'm closer to his support ships than he is to mine. It's just not going to work out. I'll get blasted out of the water very quickly. You can see I'm outspotted here, but because he's coming towards me and because I'm going towards him, it only takes, what, four or five seconds to close the gap. He's probably got about a, conceal a kilometer concealment uh, advantage over me. But aggressively pushing forward as he's doing and pushing forward as I was electing to do there, we quickly spot him. And now his support ships are not in position to shoot me. Meanwhile, I am getting a little bit of support from my team. And these guns are just able to kick the crap out of pretty much any other destroyer. So we do not want to close into positions where not only am I fighting the destroyer, quote unquote, 1v1. But it's in reality a 1v2, 1v3, 1v5, whatever it is. Yes, we get a little bit of support fire from those background ships, but... Because we didn't, we took our time, we didn't go forward as quickly as possible and as far as possible when the game started. Deploy the smoke back up into it here. We control this engagement from start to finish. Don't quite finish him off there yet, but he's essentially a one shot for any ship in the game. So we definitely won that engagement by giving up a quarter of our HP for 95% of his HP. So that's kind of what you want to be looking for here. And again, the positioning is the key to the opening play for these things. A lot of good destroyer players are telling me they just can't figure these things out and I think they're just not adjusting their positioning. They're using the traditional, I gotta be the farthest far, the farthest forward ship which still will likely be true in a lot of cases but you don't want to be as far forward because again your advantage against other destroyers is 1v1 whereas once they get their support ships in they can keep you permanently spotted, they can just turn around, uh, they'll get away from you and then you won't be able to see them, but they can keep you lit at that point. You'll never be able to disengage, you have to pop smoke or get behind cover, but if you're not able to do that, you're just going to have the entire enemy team shooting at you till you die. So those are the situations we're trying to avoid here. New Mexico, we got the cloud uh, deployed here briefly, set them on fire, switched over to some AP salvos, these US sand battleships big, juicy, uh, meaty superstructures. And if they give you a broadside, get that AP going and get some nice shots here. Here's the Gidenevi. And we can tell based on how this guy plays throughout this engagement that he has a bit more of a concealment build than I am. And we'll, I'll explain to you why it's completely worthless. First things first, I gotta alert people to this Aoba. The Aoba is the existential threat. I gotta sail away from him. I'm also trying to put some distance between me and their backline ships. So we're just kiting away from the entirety of their enemy team at this point. Uh, but I still want to deal with this Gidenevi if possible. Now he 
once once my detection drops down, I uh, will be able to see. He's able to outspot me. Well, first the mayhem pops up. I think he's shot, uh, trying to get some cheeky shot at me. Uh, but his guns aim towards the moon. My name directly at him. So long range, you definitely have an advantage over those USN destroyers at that point. Not a good fight for him to pick. Alright, back to the Gideon He's coming around. He's not shooting. He's trying to disengage, which is fine. And he'll absolutely, he'll actually drop spot and then keep me spotted, which is how I know he's got some sort of concealment on that ship. But what does it get him? He can't torp me because his concealment range is roughly 7 kilometers. His torp range is roughly 4 kilometers. So there's it's impossible for him to torp me. He can't shoot me because as soon as he shoots me, he's respotted. So... By disengaging, by stopping the shoot, yes, he's able to escape there, and yes, he's able to keep me lit here, but all I have to do is sail away from him and, uh, you know, let him d come up with a new play. If he decides to turn around and pursue me again, then I can just go back towards him and we'll, like we did with the Mayhem, we can quickly close that gap when both ships are sailing towards each other, and it completely negates that. So, what is the point of the concealment on that? He's briefly spotting me here and there, but because I'm not putting myself into a position where I don't go towards a destroyer that I know is somewhere in the area who's also guarded by four ships behind him, I'm not going to do that. So there's no point in specking that concealment. In my opinion, if you differ with me in the comments, let me know why. But I think it's you got to change the mentality with these soviet destroyers and i trust me i've been talking to a lot of good destroyer players who just aren't figuring these out and they're just not playing them at the right ranges and with the right mentality when it comes to the concealment that's my theory anyways uh here he's clearly trying to nuke this battleship i wish the battleship wasn't sailing towards him uh because we're gonna need all the ships alive at this point we got three v four uh, so we're going to try and get these shots off, get him whittled down. And you can see here, the damage that these guns do against these destroyers is wicked. We got a bit of a problem here, though. They got a full health Normandy, a full health, I think, Aoba, and then uh, like a three-quarters health Laga. I got half health Normandy, 20% health, I think, Aoba again. And then me, my HP doesn't matter because these type of situations... We'll see as this game develops. This is where the major weakness of these ships are and uh, kind of prevents you from carrying in these situations. But I want to briefly touch on the perk 3 for troops. People are asking me a lot about the one that increases the fire chance but decreases the HE damage. Uh, if you're strictly going to be trying to play it as like a cruiser-esque thing that's burning down battleships, I guess that would help a little bit there. But if you're playing it like me, where I primarily play these as counter destroyers first and foremost, and then support ships after that. Removing that HE advantage that these guns have against other destroyers, uh, just to increase the fire chance, that's going to put you at a disadvantage. So I would not play with that perk personally. I play with the twist and track, obviously, which helps find the destroyers, helps with turret traverse. Both things are going to be very nice for the ship. Now what do I need the Normandy to do in this situation? Not charge two full health ships as a half health ship, Basically, the only way we can win this game is if we take our three ships and 3v1 them one at a time. And this log is actually complying. He's getting into position early here. We're forced to kite away. I want to save this smoke. Yes, I could, pop, I could probably pop it here and uh, smoke fire for a little bit. But the, as soon as I do that, he's going to turn his attention to my support cruiser, kill him down very quickly. Then I'm going to lose my spotting. So that's not going to work. So I'm just going to try and sail away, kite, dodge, and exchange fire as long as possible. We're going to need that smoke at some point. Uh, you can see the Normandy lost is 2v1. That's not a surprise to me. Shouldn't be a surprise to you. Probably was a surprise to him, though. He probably thought he was a hell of a player, and he can take on 2v1s with half health all day long. Um, that's kind of a hallmark of a bad player, though, in my opinion. Not understanding how that works. Anyways, not to pick on him, but it's just... How you, how you, we're at a disadvantage right now, even though we had three ships feed three ships. They had two, three, four times as much HP, so that's why you always got to be looking around at your teammates, looking at the enemy, assessing their relative health values before you start making these decisions. So, 
yeah, we're getting some decent support from our cruiser. Fortunately, he's not doing a lot of damage, so we're kind of being relied on to deal most of the damage in this engagement. But that's fine. We are actually going to be able to whittle him down. Uh, but this is kind of the situation here where any other destroyer would have longer range torps. They could be sending torps out here. Maybe they'd hit, maybe they wouldn't. But it would be more of a distraction factor. They'd have to angle towards the torps. We could potentially create crossfires with the other ship then and allow them to blast them with AP in the Citadel. There's just tools that you just don't have with this thing. Uh, you know, I can disengage, yes, but what does that really do? We need to kill these ships. We're down in score, we're down in points, and, uh, you know, time's of the essence at this point. So we got the Laga down there. You can see our... Oh, we got a Laga, but you can see he's basically a one-shot here. They got a full health Normandy. I mean, this is not a fight. If I had more HP and we are able to, to kill their... Uh, I said Aoba earlier, I guess neither team had an Aoba. Uh, the Nuremberg, if he was able to kill the Nuremberg with a great salvo of AP or something, and I had more HP, then I could suicide rush the Normandy and just torp him to oblivion. He goes down, though. Now I'm racking my brain. How can we possibly pull this off? The play I come up with is swinging to the east, trying to get on these guys' broadsides, attempting to quickly AP the Nuremberg to death. And then dodge, dodge, dodge the Normandy till I can torp him from about three feet away. Odds on this play succeeding, I put it at about one in a million. So you're saying there's a chance? <laughs> Might as well try it. But, you know, it's I just don't have the tools uh, to likely succeed in this situation. And this is just kind of the limitation. Other destroyers, if they had enough time, I could torp these ships to death. You know, even without having a spotter. Uh... Let's say there was no time limit on the game. Eventually, I would win this game. The Nuremberg would be the biggest threat because it does have sonar. It has the speed and maneuverability to dodge the torps. But I could theoretically get into a position, gun that thing down, and then uh, deal with the Normandy at my leisure. And that wouldn't be an issue whatsoever. But you just don't have the tools here. So you're a support destroyer here, but with no one to support the options kind of run dry and these guys are actually doing a very good job staying near each other and so you know what I'm trying to do now get that thing down pop the smoke I'm hoping the Normandy is actually not that far from the torp range so if I can slow down here he just shot that means he's in the smoke fire penalty I'll be able to keep him lit briefly get him on fire he's gonna burn his damage comp probably or doesn't put it out I guess which is fine but he's not coming towards me anymore. He's kind of turning away or just maintaining his course. So that's going to remove that torp option there. Um, <laughs> like I said, kind of a hard luck play. But I thought this game did a fairly good job of, number one, demonstrating how we need to be dealing with enemy destroyers. Because these Soviet destroyers are powerful against the enemy destroyers. But you got to play it properly. And you got to be positioning yourself properly. So that's the main reason I picked this game. But it also kind of highlighted the the capabilities of what we can do offensively and the limitations. And this is these are both important things to realize. So, you know, once, once this situation at the end kind of developed, if you see a way around it, uh, let me know what you think in the comments. I just don't think I could possibly win this game, barring extreme gross negligence from uh, their part. <laughs> so... Anyway, uh, if you guys do have questions about the Soviet destroyers, we'll probably be doing a tech tree stream on the Soviet destroyers coming up here potentially tomorrow. Well, no, I don't have the Tashkent fully unlocked, so we'll probably do it maybe in about a week, and we'll go through them. We'll get to see them in action quite a bit. Uh, I think they're a fun line to play. I just think they're fairly challenging, which is uh, causing some frustration for a lot of people. So... Anyway, that's a look at the Minsk for you. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, you should consider subscribing. There's always a lot of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. I do love to hear from you. And we'll see you all later. All right, peace.